Hi everyone, I'm Joe Haskell and welcome to What A Flanker. Today's guest is actually a good friend of mine. I think we are friends. Yeah. Um, and he appeared with me on uh, ITV's I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out Of Here. He is a number one radio DJ disc jockey. Um, uh, yeah, I guess so. Host these days. Host. Uh, you, you actually signed a record deal at 15. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Roman Kemp. Oh, thank you very much, mate. Talk me about the record deal. Um, so I was, yeah, so I was, I was 15 and it was more of like, it's, they say record deal, but it's more, it's what's known as like a 360 deal. Um, and so it kind of came about like I was working kind of with uh, a music management company, um, just who I knew that that had kind of like reached out and were like, oh, do you want to do, do just do a bit of work and stuff? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, they were like, oh, we've got a few projects that you can either get in board on board with, like whether that be. Um, helping write songs or helping uh, front in a band or, or session or anything like that. So they wheel you out for whatever that's going pretty on? Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, it was tough. It was really hard. Like, I wasn't, like you, you were doing like band projects and stuff like that, but the band project could just like end and then you do like a new one <laughs> and you just see which one sticks. But each one like has its own record deal and like money behind it. So it was weird. You were just getting paid to like attempt to try stuff. Because you know why I saw with the record deal thing was that there's a clip on the internet that came up of Our Time in the Jungle when you were singing yeah. um, Ed Sheeran songs. <laughs> I'm uh, no singer. I well, was never a singer. Well, you say that though. I don't know whether it's because I was really hungry and slightly emotional, but you sang really well that day. I, I think you were delirious. No, well, I... Because I've seen, seen that clip. I thought you got a lovely voice. Yeah, it's it's a nice in tune voice. It's a nice backing singer voice. Fine, but the point was I didn't know you had it in your locker, oh. and then and <laughs> then because because I haven't told it. I've, I think we have told people in public this, but I will say that when I first saw I was going to the jungle, yeah, um, I wasn't overly familiar with with you. You weren't with me, and I and, yeah. I, and I was like. I saw Roman Kemp, and I was like, Kemp. I was like, oh, sweet. Like, Who's you know? Is his dad a, a bloke off of ga- off of, off of the gangs? Yeah. You know, um, Ross Kemp. Ross Kemp. And yeah. I was like, why is Ross Kemp's son, son going, in, going the in the jungle? I couldn't understand it. And then yeah. it was only before I met you that someone went, oh, Spandau Ballet. I went, oh fuck that Kemp. Yeah. That would have been awkward. But yeah. I just, I thought your voice was lovely. And oh, well, thank you. Um, it, I think I, I listened about the clip the other day, and it, it kind of really touched me, mate. Well, listen. Anytime you want me to serenade you, that's fine. <laughs> but I, no, I, I, it was. Do you know what? It was a lot of fun. I got. To, I got to, for three years of my life. I spent playing gigs in the arse end of nowhere, um, but then some. Some really cool big gigs. You know, like doing doing some really really big shows, and it was really fun. Like and, and you know playing bass for for a living for three years. Played the bass. Slap the, the bass. Were you? That's it. Yeah. Well, when when my dad went back to Spandau Ballet. Um, when they got back together, like because it was like post brain tumor for him, um, he had forgotten all his bass bass lines that he had written. So I had to reteach him his own bass lines on Spandau Ballet. Shut up. Yeah. So it was yeah. Like, so I didn't know that because remember when again in the jungle we were sitting down talking. You went and you said about my dad. Yeah, so my dad obviously yeah. had an unfortunate time, and I was mm. looking around going. What happened? What the fuck's he talking about? Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, and then you yeah. said he had a brain shit. I was like, oh my oh, God, yeah, right, yeah. explain this. Yeah, so, so I mean, you know, when I was a kid, it was, I mean, it must have been, I was young, I was really young, so I don't remember any of it. My mum did a great job to shield it away from me and my sister, but my dad basically had one brain tumour, and then when they operated and got rid of that brain tumour, they realised one that was actually inside his brain. Um, and it was really, it was really horrible. It was really, like, touch and go. Like, like you know, my dad thought he was going to die, so did my mum. Um, but then he just got really lucky. He was really, really lucky because it was a benign tum- tumor. It wasn't like cancer or sort of stuff like that. And uh, and yeah, I think y- you know that 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 kind of thing. And and it's helped me out in my life. Knowing like sometimes I'll look at my parents and I'll go like you know like when you hear about stories of like people's families like going through like oh my god this person's you know having a their life with cancer or, or has come through a terrible car crash or or anything like that right accident or or, or illness. And then I look at my parents and I go, oh, shit, like, you actually were one of those people that went through that. Like, do you know what I mean? And I find it mad because my parents have always kind of, and this is the thing that I love, is, is never become a victim of life. Do you know what I mean? If, if that scenario comes to you, don't moan about it for the rest of your life. Don't feel like you're hard done by by things and life's against you. You've still got, a, as, soon as, as soon as it's over, just think, okay, that's that done. What's the next bit? How do you make it better? And... It's helped me in a, in a lot of situations. I was going to say that, even though you were quite young, 
obviously subsequently looking at back and with more life experience, has that really helped you? And has that set the your yeah. attitude to life now? Hundred percent. Like like it helps me in loads of different aspects. If something bad happens to me, I don't I don't sit and wallow on it. Like I'd rather just cut it off, cool, understand it, digest it. Yeah, that's what happened. It's nothing to do with anyone. It's nothing. It's no one's fault. Like, do you know what I mean? It, it's just that's that's life. That's what happens. It's there's no point sitting thinking, oh, I'm cursed or oh, bad luck follows me around. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm not a lucky person. It's like no, you got there. You got to do it yourself. Because one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today was obviously just getting to know behind the scenes of Roman Kemp. Yeah. Life. Which looks like you're only a lot of cash at the moment. There's some, <laughs> behind the scenes, I imagine there's a lot of cash. So I imagine that you finish work on the radio and go back to your sort of Scrooge McDuck tower oh, yeah. and just swim in mountains of cash. If I turn my phone on one more time and there's a fucking advert, with I you, know, mate. Like, do you know what? Like, the thing is, yeah, is, is that uh, you love cash. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no, it's 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 just the fact of like, look, I, my parents always say to me again, like, my my mum and dad have drilled into me that you're hot for a minute. In this world. Yeah, 100%. And if you're hot for that minute, make it scorching. I'm still waiting to be hot. I've simmered. Yeah, you've simmered. simmered. No, but you're there, man. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you're still, you're still part of it. Like, and that's so, that's so important. You know, it's a horrible thing. Like, like that's, you know, my, and we'll get into it later on. I'm sure, you know, fame for me is a horrible thing where you feel like you're constantly on a treadmill just to stay relevant Mm. and which is ridiculous. But also, yeah, I mean, that's what I wanted to talk to you about was actually dealing with, with, with fame, Um, you know, becoming from famous parents, making yourself a a success completely in your own right, establishing Mm. yourself as your, you know, as your very own entity. It must be quite hard. But before we, we get into those details, just tell people who are listening so what what do you do at the moment? What because I did my introduction didn't really yeah. do you justice. No no no. So, Even though you look like a UPS driver. So today. I look like a UPS driver in full um, poo Beige. brown. Poo, poo brown. Poo brown. Um, no so so I'm uh, I'm Roman Kemp. I'm 27 years old. Um, you look I younger. Host, I host I host the Capital Breakfast Show. Um, Sorry, I love you to the pause. That was like the Capital, Capital Breakfast, Breakfast Show. Show. Sorry about that. Wait for it. Because you know you got my dream job. So I had to keep interrupting. Radio DJ. Oh, oh. DJ. No, no, no. I, I, my, yeah, DJ, DJ is, is what I really yeah. want to do. Carl right? Cox is your, yes. is your dream. But I, everyone asks me, what would you like to I'd love to wake the nation up on this morning and do like a radio yeah, show with it's you. It's banging. It, it, what a dream. Uh, literally, I speak to my dad about it all the time. And, you know, and I say to him, I'm like, that's the only time where I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm so lucky because I know that I go into work and guaranteed for four hours straight, at least, or at least once during that four hours, I am crying laughing. Like, and no one else can say that. Who can say that? Do you know what I mean? That's why, like, when people finish breakfast shows and they're like, oh, you must be so glad that the hours are over. It's like, you miss it. Mad. Like, like you, you really miss it. And you really, you know, you, you miss that buzz. And I think that, you know, so I, so I, so I host um, the Capital Breakfast and I do some, some TV presenting, but I, I spent real time kind of pushing TV to the side because I wanted to perfect the show and, and give my all to the show because y- if you do get tired you get tired again and, and filming everything else and it will affect the show now it's at a point where the show's second nature and and you know you've you kind of developed a relationship with the listeners the thing that I always find funny is that whenever you do something on the radio it's like especially if you want something to land with the listeners say a catchphrase or say um, something silly that you do that, that you want them to get involved with the point at which they love it is the point when you're sick of it. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Like, that's it. Yeah. Like, I do this thing called a mega hard super quiz, which is, again, just a ridiculous thing. I was just like, all right, I want to make a really hard quiz. And I think I was pissed up when I, when, I, when I thought, like, the name, and it was just like, oh, a mega hard super quiz. Like, do you know what I mean? And it's banter, like, you know, and, and then now, like, I, we, I, I do that every day. And you can imagine, you'd think, oh, you do it every day, like, same time, and, like, right, you must be knackered of it. But now it's like people are buzzing and like people are actually buzzing to come on air and, and take it on, which is so, which makes me so proud that, you know, us as a team have, have kind of made this and, and it does make you enjoy it again. Um, but I think that radio DJ, mate, and being able to have the privilege of, of you know, getting people's days started is, is unreal. But let me tell you, during a pandemic, it is the scariest thing ever. Why? Why? Because I was waking up and going into work and seeing death toll. And thinking, how the fuck do I tell people how to feel? Yeah, yeah, okay, I get you. I'm 27 years old. How do you set a tone for when everything's falling apart around I'm, you? I'm 27 years old from a privileged background. What do I say? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, honestly, what do I say? What did you say? That. Fine. I said, did, did, I, said did, I don't you, know what to tell you. Did you address it or did you skirt around it? Or no, I addressed no? it straight on. Fine. 
for me, like, I, I, like in the same way how I deal with um, a confrontation, yeah, I have to address it straight away. Fine. Because I don't like sitting on things. I don't like feeling nervous about anything. Like, because I'm, I'm not a, I'm never one to get embarrassed. Fine. Like, I don't, I don't have an embarrassment filter. Ever. I can see that some of the outfits you've worn. You get exactly. <laughs> but but that, that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I genuinely, I don't have an embarrassment yeah. filter and I love that. And I just think that when I was went in there, I, I knew that I just had to be honest and I just had to say, look, I, I, you know, I have no idea what to even say. All, all I know, all I know is how to try and make people laugh Fine. And, and, and how to play some songs. So that's what we're going to do for the next four hours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. and then in in terms of like other bits, like we, we were trying our best to like get callers on just to just to chat. And, and what was the reaction like from people when they were calling in? It was good. It well, was really fine, good. It, yeah. it was good. It's hard, really hard. You've got people... a real loyal fa- fan base, though, haven't you? Yeah, but I was, I was, I was. We were diagnosing people with coronavirus on air. Oh really? Like, we had a doctor on the show, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah <laughs> oh yeah. my god! And like you know, and and people are scared. Like people are really scared. Like I, I had people texting in, being like, "I'm locked in my house, and I, I've I've gone out in." You know, this is all I have. I suppose that is because you were the one conduit to the outside world. So, so if you you had to set the mood, set the tunes, yeah, people, yeah, and that's the only reaction people that's, had. I, people know that I'm in the studio. Yeah, people are saying to me, "What is it looking like outside?" Yeah, yeah like yeah, I had yeah. to have a, we had to have like a letter that where the police stopped me once to say, "Oh, why are you out?" And I say, "Oh, because uh, broadcasting was listed as a key um, key, key worker. worker." Yeah. I thought I saw you queuing at the front queue at the Tesco's trying to get in. Yeah, exactly. I was like, excuse me, excuse, yeah, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Same yeah. nice fuck off. When I, when, I, yeah, when I went out on my balcony, I just stood there. <laughs> yeah, I, just, yeah. I didn't do it. Yeah. I didn't clap. I didn't I was clap. Like, I was like, oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank no, you but it, you know what I mean? And, and the, the, tough, the toughest thing is that, and, and I found this during, and listen, I've broadcast through some tough times, like, and I had a huge baptism of fire, and, and you've got to learn quick. I've been on air when, um, I've been on air when, the Bataclan attack happened. I've been on air when the London Bridge terrorist attack happened. I was on air when Grenfell was still burning, and uh, and I host the biggest show in London. Uh, I was on air when um, we were giving away tickets to the Manchester Arena Ariana Grande gig, and had to wake up the next day to find out what had happened. Do you do you think with the that people sometimes, because you are in the public eye and you are that conduit, because we were going to come on to more of the fame stuff, but it's sort of starting on that journey now. Yeah. Is do you do you find that people hold you responsible for that? that Some you know, people would. You know, like you know, you because you have to comment on it. So sometimes social commentary, sometimes you being a conduit, people don't know where to direct their their focus, and people in the public eye can can be on the receiving end of that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Some people would. Some people would. You know, really kind of see them themselves like as someone that that has to feel responsible for all of it but i think honestly it's just the main thing because no, i just wondered whether some you know say the ariana grand grand i think happened you know some people you get such a diverse opinion on social media people writing going, you shouldn't be yeah. broadcasting we should be doing this or should yeah. be that you know so no, going, of course why, why would you do this what you know people have died why are you fucking why playing you, playing, you know yeah, taylor yeah, swift yeah. but you have to you you, you have to uh, you have to be careful with your words and you have to try and address that as much as possible. You have to, you have to play for the mass audience. This is in the same way that when people go, Oh, how come, how come you don't play this artist? Yeah. Or how come you don't play this artist? Or do you pick the songs and all those types yeah, of things? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Fact yeah. Is, no, I don't pick the songs. Like, because the people that actually pick the songs are the general public Yeah. because it's chart music. Yeah. It, it, you know, you have to appeal to the mass and, and not appeal to, but, but kind of, you know, if you're hosting, if you're hosting a dinner for, 5,000 people, you're going to try and make everyone happy. You're not just going to try and make one section over there mm. happy. Like, you've got to try and make everyone happy and you find a balance between the two. And I think that's what you have to do and you have to really watch your words on it. Yeah, but do you, so you say watching your words, right? I, I'm in a, in a position, you know, so the whole idea with this What a Flanger podcast was to sit along with my with my autobiography and the book is, I've been very honest and open, but I, I know that I divide opinion. Yeah. I would say someone... You're, you're on a mainstream radio show. You come from a, a, a very famous family and you, I wouldn't say you're littered with, with scandal. You're not particularly no. uh, divisive. No. Do you find it hard watching what you say? Cause I, Basically, not... you're saying I'm boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, vanilla thriller in a beige yeah. suit. No, I just mean that you have a responsibility. You obviously have opinions. You obviously yeah. have to, if you keep saying, you have to choose your words carefully. I obviously have to choose my words carefully. But you don't. But not as carefully as you. And I obviously yeah. don't at times. Yeah, but that's, okay, here's my thing. I don't have at all a um I don't at all have a complex of working up to being 
as good as my dad or my mum. Fine. At all. The only thing I care about is making sure that I don't ruin the name that they've built. Fine. Okay. And that is important to me. You So you do feel responsibility to that name, not just yourself? Yeah, for sure. Really? Okay. If I go down, we're all going down. <laughs> well... Dad well, of disgraced radio yeah, DJ. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, 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 honestly, like, you, know, you do think about it, and and that's that's the only thing. And mate, I'm not. Listen, if you wanna if you wanna become famous quickly, do bad stuff. Yes. Don't don't do good stuff. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but if yeah. you want a career out of this and you actually want to make it make it right, then do the right things because that's how those are the people that make it. The people that make it are the nice guys, not 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 the not the horrible people. They'll make money quick, but they'll be out quick. Yeah, that's actually we had Nick Fanciulli on, and he and he said exactly the same thing. He said you see people in the industry who push things who, who are difficult because I couldn't find a bad someone to say a bad word against Nick. Not that I was looking for. Yeah, one. but it was just interesting because in, in especially in entertainment and, and media industry, there's a lot of egos. There's a lot of people interested in money. There's a lot of hangers on. And it's sometimes difficult to be a good person. Well, yeah. it, it can seem like that. So it's interesting that you say exactly the same thing that you know you can burn brightly and aggressively, but then fade out. And if you've got a bad reputation, then that's that's you fucked for life. Yeah, Frankie Kokoza. Yes, <laughs> baggy Kokoza. But do you know what I mean? Like you know th- those types of people, they come and go, yeah. and and they're chip paper the next day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but also, I just think who wants to who wants to say no. controversial bad stuff? No, I don't. Like... But I don't see when I say like I don't ever want to. It's never about being controversial. It's people about uh, out there saying ridiculous stuff. I just meant the difference between I can say fucking shit and uh, you know I yeah. do something when whereas you know when when you and I have been together. We may po- I might post something f- funny or say something, and mm. you might go. Oh, I don't think that's the right thing to do. Not because yeah. it's not because it's anything bad. No, but it's just you've got a certain image. Well, I don't. I, I didn't have but, that but, consideration. But do you know what it is? It, and and this is the bluntest way to put it. It's like, you know, you have to. Th- I have to think the people that follow you, like, oh, you know, your age demo is what. Uh, 30 no <laughs> gee fucking 16, prick 70, it's fucking 26 to 38 26 to you 30 prick eight. but exactly so 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 26 to 38 what's yours 12 to yeah 12 no. to 15 no but I'm, no, but my, little mine's birds like, mine's like, no but mine's like mine's like you know t- uh, 12 to 24 uh, female like do you know what I mean yeah, that's what, yeah, it's, but, yeah. And, 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 and I have to think like you know if, if the mum of someone is sat next to them on the phone and then they see me and if I post something that's got swearing all over yeah. it they'll say to their kid oh don't follow this person yeah, like, do you right. know what I mean and, and I think it's the same way it's like Coca-Cola aren't all of a sudden gonna start selling a bunch of alcohol saying let's get fucking lit do you know yeah, what I yeah. mean because they that's should put the cocaine their... back in the Coca-Cola though but no. during this pandemic they should do but... it you have to agree with it I think they should if it... 2020's gone down the toilet they say I'm not fucking it around put the coke back in the Coca-Cola <laughs> I always used to think that was a lie, but it is true. It's fucking hundred percent true. Yeah, it's true. No wonder everyone liked it. It was the world's favorite. I know. Coca-Cola. Unreal. But but like uh, you know, I, I I think that I think with um with that, it's just I don't my I and I've said this before. I actually addressed it before I went into the jungle. Like uh, and I don't want like my kind of legacy that I leave behind for my kids in terms of my career to be anything. Yeah, that's actually uh, interesting. You say you say that with the thing. I remember I I hadn't, I never paid attention to anything. Right, and I remember just before we came in, I saw a newspaper article. It's like Roman yeah. came in tears, apologising for something. I was yeah, like, what the fuck? Firstly, is... I went in tears. Wow. Firstly, I went in tears. I put in no. It wasn't that. In no. tears. Do you know what it was? It was. I was like, in tears, Fanny. Uh, no, no, but I just wanted. <laughs> I, I I was no, because the thing is, I went to the jungle. And I was looking at people. I said, like, Roman Kemp. I said, like, fucking hell, Ross Kemp, son. Uh, and now he's fucking crying. I was like, "What?" But I didn't know what you'd. Nothing. No, but that was the thing. Like, and then when, when, when I just because the fact that I spoke about that, people were like trying to bring up things that were like nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. And and like, and it was so weird. And it was just like, it was just like. Do you like, feel like you had to apologize though? Do you think it was the best no, business decision? Uh, well, without being ruthless, I'm sorry. What I meant. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't. I, I don't. I don't feel like y- you have to apologize. I, I think genuinely that that was a that was a thing that I, I wanted to wanted to say because I I you know as as I said at the time it was like I think I just watched that the Jesse Nelson documentary 
that she had put out about online trolls and all yeah. those types of things. And then I, like the one where she, is that the one where she says that she's like or an ordinary person? Yeah, I saw at the end with, with more of an entourage than anyone I've ever met. <laughs> but she is just an ordinary person. Though. Hey, listen, <laughs> do you know what? Sometimes those entourage are clinging onto you. Yeah, well, I don't problem. own that. Nobody's. That, no, no, I'm clinging onto my wife. <laughs> I don't even have an entourage. You're I, still clinging onto me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Please come on, what a flank. No, but the thing with it is, is that I said I, 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 she came up on stage in one of the NTAs, and obviously yeah. she got terrible troll. Like, I, I don't d- deny that. Yeah. Yeah. But it was interesting. It was like just, just ordinary me. And I was like, ordinary you. You've got a stylist here. You've had your hair done over here. Someone's cold in your coat. And I was like, yeah, but there's the levels of ordinary. Time, there's levels of ordinary. Come down to my gap. But, but at the same time, that doesn't give anyone the right to go no, for someone online. No fucking online. no way. Yeah, and exactly. That's, what I want, that's what one of the things I want to, I want to talk to you about is the, is the trolling. Because you know, you're under scrutiny the whole time. And, yeah. you, and you have obviously said... Uh, you know, rightly that you would you, you would choose your words to be respectful. It's interesting because when I do a podcast called The Good, The Bad, The Rugby, there's another one, and I get written by mothers sometimes. You say, my kids are young and they listen to your podcast. You swear, could you turn the swearing down? And I, part of me is like, do you know what? I would love to cater for those pe- for those for, for those kids, but actually, yeah. I think people get bogged down too much with swearing. I think it, you know, yeah. in certain aspects of it, I think like, the Rock swears. And you know, yeah. if if he swears, it's good enough I, for me. And I, 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 I've no, I've no issue with swearing. I, 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 I tend not to do it on my socials because, no, fine. because there's kids, and also um, because you, you know, with all those brands, you know, we, we Chloe and I, there's a more, more fucking podcast than than uh, Acast, but oh, Chloe yeah. and I do a, a couple's quarantine, and we had a company came in like something like Hello Fresh or someone looked at it, and they were like, we'd love to sponsor it for her the first episode, and I was like, finger blasting, we bring it back, and they're like, yeah, probably not yeah. in association with the with the brand, but. I, I I am envious of you for the a because of of, of how successful you because you do the job I, I I want to do but more importantly you do get a lot of brands because you know how to be sensible and you're a good nice person you know what I, I think mean? I think I I genuinely think that like you know it, it, and it's so you know you can say it in terms of it's like a magical formula it's not it's just like I have kids that follow me and. My mum is the first person to say, oh, why? I don't like you like swearing all the time. But if I come on this, like, and people are tuning into something like this, of course they know what they're yeah. going to get. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if I go on, like, if, you know, when I'm a celeb, I swore in there. Like, yeah. it's, you know, but oh, you, have to, it, James. But you have to remember as well, like, you, but you have to remember as well, like, I'm programmed to not swear. Yes, of course. Like, because of on air. But my problem is I can switch it on and off though. That's the weird thing, which kind yeah. of makes it. I can like, switch it on yeah. and off, but it's just like it, you do it for so but long. You wouldn't want to swear on capital. You would not on capital the radio. Hey, fuck me. Never. That's the game over. You get off. off I get off com. Yeah. How many off com? What's the most off com pl- complaints you've had? I we had a problem with a band called BTS. Right. Um. And I, they said their fans said that I called their song noise like construction right noise. And um, it's a Korean band, right? And um, and their fan base is known to be like you know, one of the biggest on the planet, right? And like insane tweet tweeters, um, and it was something ridiculous. Let me let me. I'm interested about because I I got some off con complaints as well, not wanting to be left out. I um I think I got two hundred uh, my time in the jungle. I upset a few people. Two hundred. Yeah. Oh, that's that's oh, that's okay. That's a decent amount. Yeah, but I but I actually thought that if you're not getting off on complaints, how boring must you be? Because people will complain about anything these days. Mate, I, I we actually get I actually we do get quite a lot of off complaints all the time. Um, the most the most notable one is a guest came onto my show and 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 said something about uh, Santa Claus um, on the case of whether or not he's real. Yeah, of course he's real. But this yeah. person went on and said yeah, it well, wasn't. I, I said I said something similar to to you and to Ian Wright in the jungle, and that's what set it and off. And that's what set it off. And they ah. said I ruined Christmas. But my point was, is that programs on after the watershed? You're terrible parents. Your kids keep <laughs> in bed. <laughs> and the same thing with people on Instagram going, but, "Oh, you yeah. follow me." Instagram has an age limit of sixteen. But but also Fuck at the same time, yeah. But I think you get you get just as annoyed as the people that complain. Oh, what about them complaining? Yeah. No, I, I actually. Mate, I could like that's the thing that like, I could be a very angry, bitter person if I went through the complaints list and if I went through like how many times people call me a prick like whilst I'm on air, <laughs> like or like like how many times I look at the text machine machine and see "shut up, you prick" and play a song. <laughs> like no, I don't get upset, but I bite. I always yeah. bite. But oh, you... mate, you're the biggest chomper on the planet. I love it. I love it though. I'm always like that. If you put it out there, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take you down. Um, 
but I, before we go into the, the, the real nitty gritty of this, how are you anyway? Because I know you've had a bit of a up and down time, obviously with the, with the quarantine, but you've got a very close team at, um, at, at Capital. Unfortunately, you, yeah. you, 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 lost, uh, you lost a mate during yeah. this period. Yeah, um, uh, horrible, mate. Uh, really, really horrible. Um, it was a, the most upsetting thing that could ever happen. Uh, you know, uh, and listen, that's that's no shout because I know a lot of people this year have gone through the exact same thing where they've lost someone close to them. Um, but you know, it, it's it, it was very strange. It's a very strange scenario. Um, uh, just losing your best mate, anyway. Let alone losing someone that you work with every day and is the person who you put down your success to yeah um you know joe sat sat next to me for five years five six years of my life literally on my left hand side and not just that like then we'd go out in the evenings and then like you know what i mean he's my best mate he's the closest thing that i had like you know my i've got my two other best mates and then i've got him and they're, they're the closest things i have to brothers and it is it's tough, mate. And and the thing is, is that I've never lost someone and it be public like that and That's me be the age that I am. And it's weird getting in a cab and someone asking you about That's it. That's what I want. So the reason I asked it was not just because I want to pry into it because the whole theme of this is kind of dealing with fame. You've talked about, you know, controlling yourself yeah. and being under control. I talk also, about it all the time, mate. Someone in, in losing someone yeah. in the public, how do you get that respite? Because everybody knows. Because yeah. you have to say something. Mate, I was in a restaurant and, and someone come up to me and was like, so sorry for your loss. And it's just like, I was I was really happy not being in that headspace, yeah. and then like all of a sudden someone comes over and says it, yeah. which you know is a lovely thing to say, but but it's hard, like you know, but because you're having to grieve inside and outside, and then people keep reminding it, as opposed to yeah, a lot of people wouldn't know, ordinarily wouldn't know. No, you would never. I, mean, know. I would never have known, obviously, in, if I hadn't picked up the paper. I think yeah. I, I messaged you out the blue. I picked up the paper and was like, yeah, I texted you straight away. I was like, I'm so sorry, but yeah, again, yeah, I didn't yeah. know the detail. It's it's. Yeah. Does you think that makes it a lot harder run, doing running through emotional things, not just death, but relationships and everything in the public Same. eye? Same breakup, mate. Never, never, never dealt with, um, never dealt with uh, a breakup before um, in the public eye. Like I've never been relevant enough to for people to to care about my relationship status. Um, and now it's like I go on a date and someone tells a story about going on a date, and it's like what. You know, or or I go for like I go for dinner with me, my best mate, and his fiance, and it's in the paper that I'm with the fiance. Oh, I thought it was having a three ball. No, were... that's what I'm saying. But they cut him out of the photo, and it's like it's like you know, and and that's that's difficult because like there's certain parts, but but mate, like I understand it. You know, I understand it. At the well, same that's what I say because there's always you... there's always two sides. To it. That's what that's what you mm. always have to understand. The tenacity that we have to do our jobs and to to get it right. Those guys with the cameras who wait outside the restaurants, they're doing the same thing. Mm. They're, they're doing the same thing. They're, they're, the people that write those articles, they're doing the same thing. We're all just trying to make a living. And, and when you get into this game, you know what you sign up for. You know what you sign up for. And, and, and in our world, which is now your world now, um, you know, it's before your life was win or loss yeah. on, on a rugby pitch. And that was it. Yeah. Now you've got so many other variables that you have to deal with, your public yeah. image, et cetera, blah, blah. It, with fame, when you're a famous person, however that is, there are pros and cons to your job. And unfortunately, the biggest con to the job is is the fame. Mm. Like, is actually people recognizing you and is, is, is the bits that people aspire to. And yeah, they think it's going to be the best bit about it. About it's the it. worst bit about it. People always say this. Uh, when you see it, well, you're in the public eye, you deserve to be criticised. If you put yourself out there, if you do this, if you take, if you take the Queen's, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Queen's well, shilling or whatever. Yes or it no? Says. My dad, my dad always used, my dad always says to me, if you put your head above the parapet, you got to take it. Yeah, and he's right. You are right. So I, I, I agree in the fact that if you put yourself out there, mm -hmm. you should always be open to positive and negatives because that's what life, you know, goes around. Yeah, but it's only your decision. Okay, so, so again, going back to you know everything that I've been going through recently. Yeah, right? I had like my girlfriend splitting up with me and my best my best mate dying within the space of a month right i have two decisions i can sit and wallow and be upset about it or i can go okay that's happened let's move on 
we go to Greece with your your, your fifth best mate. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or, or you know what I mean. Yeah, and, yeah. And 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 just kind of live my life and go. Okay, that's that. I'm choosing. I'm choosing to be happy. I, I agree with you, but what what I was trying to get at was. Yes, I think you've got the mental fortitude and mental strength to do that. And I think if you come into this into this area of fame and you have insecurities, weakness, and don't address any of these things that maybe got you to where you're, you know, because we talk about, I talked about with Nick about a recipe for success. So my recipe for success was self-doubt, not a lot of confidence in my ability, pe- thinking that people didn't think I was good enough and me wanting to put the extra work in and being driven to be successful, mm. desperate to be the best rugby player to earn good money and do whatever. However, if you don't address those at some point... The lack of confidence will hold you back. The fact that you um, are so self-critical that you, you know, never enjoy any any moments because you're always thinking about the next thing. Those can unravel. So that's why you have to address it. I just wondered with with what you're doing, or people being in the public eye, is that I think you should be open to criticism. I think you well, how you deal with it is really well. But I don't agree with the way that press and fans and people should be able to act. I don't think someone should be able to go on 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 you know, Instagram and continuously call you a prick all the time with no accountability. I don't believe it's true because you wouldn't get away with it in real life. No, I mean, look, that in that sense, yeah, there are filters that should be in place for like online stuff. But that was, that what you're saying there is the same thing that I wanted to be able to try and set an example from me to say to get rid of, you know, anything that you would ever deem like even calling tweeting someone calling them an idiot yeah or tweeting a rival football team and saying something do you know what i mean mm. like that to me i was like i don't want to leave that behind i don't i don't want to deal with that so like, that's what you the meant point? with by the, the, the yeah, celebrity thing exactly. just saying that, yeah exactly because it, to be honest it was it was more of a thing of like at that time i just felt like that was the right thing to do and when you feel like that you got to just do it of course you have to i mean i i got someone to, i i rang up my agent when before they signed i said listen go and get a company to go through everything i've ever done <laughs> And yeah. they sent me back. So, I mean, luckily, none of it, all of it was, anything was, was, was dodgy was always me countering someone who called me a fucking prick. I'd go on and say... You'd buy it. I buy it, of course I do. But in the, in the book, What a Flanker, there's a, there's a great chapter where we talk about fans and interaction. It's very topic. And uh, some fan wrote to me, goes, you're fucking shit, you should never play for England. And I looked at his profile and I said, you've got a set of teeth like burnt fence posts and your missus looks like she caught fire and was put out with a hammer, right? Of course he did. Of course he did. Yeah. Like, scorched earth policy. Like, yeah. If you're going to go back, I'm going to yeah, fucking yeah, bury it. I'm not messing it. around. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah, go, yeah. what? He went water pistols, I went nukes. Fine. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. Messing with big boys. So then he wrote back going, oh my God, tagged in the England rugby team. Surely there's a policy against social media for this. And after, yeah. you know, I've never been so insulted. And after the tragic thing that's happened to my wife, I was oh, like, no. I wrote back going, yeah. oh my God, did your wife actually catch fire and someone put her out with a hammer? Because yeah. that is terrible. Yeah. The bloke was lying about everything. Obviously, the trolls just don't like being trolled. Yeah. So I went through and I deleted a lot of stuff, but it wasn't, I've never been, I've never had an opinion about anything, you know what I mean, about politics or yeah. about people who reached out. I, I've only ever countered stuff. I've never been homophobic. I've never done anything yeah, else. So yeah, it's yeah. been, it was actually uh, okay, but that was my biggest fear. And actually my time in the jungle, we talk about that celebrity thing. I'm interested to see what you think about it because you have all the benefits, yeah. but the fall happens fucking way faster than you than it, do, it, it does to get to the top of it and to stay there. Like one mistake, one thing, you'll never work again. Well, all now. you have to think about, all you have to think about is no one likes to see people doing well. I, they don't. They don't. Not in the, and, I think and, not... and even if you do, there's going to be one point where you slip up and they go bang. Look at Ellen DeGeneres now. At one point, like could have been pr- president of yeah. the United States. Now everyone's out for her. You know, and and like and rightly so. You know, she's done some terrible things. Like, well, how, how is she? Or was it her producers? She said. Well. It, you know. That's my lawyer. That's lawyer. Yeah, so allegedly. So. Allegedly, we'll, we'll allegedly. say the word allegedly. allegedly. We'll yeah, say the word yeah, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I don't think Ellen DeGeneres is going to listen to this podcast. No, she fucking should but, be, but, but, you know. but I, I just think that you know, again, it, it goes back to this thing of rising to to stuff and knowing when to rise and when not to rise. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If I'm on a football pitch and someone says something to me, <laughs> like then yeah, yeah, let's go. But that's because you're in the cage. But as long as as, as soon as the whistle goes, you shake hands, yeah. you leave, right? Growing up, mate, like, I could have been 13. I remember. I was about 13. And, like, you know, I saw it from the outside perspective before I dealt with it personally. So I was at a, you know, advantage. I saw my dad go go through it and, and have people yell stuff to him that was, like, negative or positive, you know, and him not rise to it and, and never kind of backtrack to it because he knows what's the point. 
Do you know what I mean? They're, they're, was he good at that? He, he didn't he's write great. it. He's great. At, he's never risen to it. At one time, mate, like me and my me and my dad were were leaving somewhere. I remember I was a kid. I must have been 13, 14. And like a group of women like were just like outside waiting for autographs. As we're walking out, my dad was just like, like, you know, we're just trying to leave, right? He'd signed a couple, trying to leave. One of them goes, Roman, Roman, your mum's a slut. <laughs> and I turned Stop. around. I turned around and I was like, what? Like, what the fuck did you just say? And then, and then she was like, "Oh, I was just getting your attention." And it's like, but that's what I mean. But people would say you deserve, you know. But oh, that's people fine. are it's weird, acceptable. mate. People, people are, are mental. Weird. They're just people weird. are They're just mental. Weird. And 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 you know, you have to learn that, and you have to know. Okay, you're 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 putting yourself out there. You are casting your net wide, and if you cast your net wide, the weirdos are going to be in there as well. Yeah. Could... And 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 there is zero point. The only thing that you will get out of calling this guy out, calling this guy out w- with his wife and all this type of stuff, right? Nothing. Yeah. Like you get nothing. He gets everything. Yeah, of course. You get nothing. Yeah. So then tell me, is there a point? Yeah, no, you, look, I couldn't agree with you more. The benefit, and actually that's what Chloe said to me. She she used an example because obviously she thinks I'm quite simple. She went, do you think that the, um, does the rock reply to people like that? Does it, and I went, no. And he goes, why the yeah. fuck are you doing it? He said, you're giving them oxygen. You're shining however dimly my line, my, uh, yeah light shines you're giving them uh, you're giving them a spotlight you're giving them a platform and it's lose lose you, you you know a guy at a dinner dinner the other day i was talking i gave him some shit ever, all everyone laughed he came up to later licked his finger stuck it in my ear in front of everybody and i, I this was about weeks after constant people hitting me on the back slapping pushing me i fucking choked him out in front of everybody in yeah thing. and obviously you know it's just not a great not a great look to to, to have because it's it's, it's lose lose i've mate uh, uh, do you know what i uh, um, uh, <laughs> I never, I never get annoyed. I never get annoyed. And then about three weeks ago, um, four weeks ago maybe, um, I think my missus had just kind of ended things and and, uh, my ex-missus had just ended things. And then I was kind of like in this situation where like, you know, you know what it's like. You go out every now and again and and, and you get a bit more drunk than you'd usually get. Yeah. And I was with my best, best mates. Yeah. And... A couple of lads, younger lads, like as I'm trying to leave the pub, saying stuff like nice stuff, but just like in your face yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like pointing right in my face, saying, "Yeah, oh, it's is it him? Is it it? Yeah, oh, it's yeah, it. yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, right in your face, Roman, like, Roman, but Roman, like right yeah. in your face, like, like, and you know, kind of aggravating it. And I've gone back at them, and I've started saying stuff that I would never say, and it's not me to say, ever, and. I instantly, I said that stuff and I turned around and my best mate was there and he was just shaking his head. And he was just like, don't ever say that ever. Like, don't ever be like that. Yeah, but, you're, but, but that's basically saying that you are never allowed to have a bad day. And that's what people in the public are yeah, allowed but, to have. But, but if I'm honest, mate, no, you're not. But you, you're, you're happy, not. you accept that. Yeah, thing, I accept yeah? that. I accept Fine. that. I'll, I'll have to get out in different ways. You know, and, and, and you know, you're not burying people under your patio while you were no <laughs> but like i just mean like you know but like but i i love that I, i've got those mates as well that, that, that know that and that are like what you're doing like what's the point like there's the zero point it's just that's and that's when it goes back to this thing there are pros and cons to our job right yeah and the cons to the job are that we can't do things like that but do you think you're do you think you understand that better because you seem very at home with it because of your parents because chloe said the same thing about my wife chloe mainly about her parents rich and judy seeing firsthand how weird fans are how people go you know press going through going through their bins uh calling people up and insinuating people are ill etc do you feel do you feel like scarred from that period of time, or do you feel like better versed because of that? I was super lucky because, uh, and we never had any bad press growing right. up, ever. I, I never never saw once a bit of bad press. I saw how much press can hound people. Obviously, m- with my godfather with George Michael, and yeah, I, I can, I've I've seen it firsthand how badly they, like they can hound you. Um, but you know, I've been fortunate enough to see how to deal with it like in like a a positive way and i think that in that sense that's the best thing ever how could how could i not enjoy the fact that i've only got positivity around my family's you know name if i look in the paper or if i try and type something in online it's all good. That's quite lucky that you know you, how long your 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 dad's been in the public eye for to 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 have had that. Yeah, well, I always remember like Piers Morgan did life stories with him, 
and Piers is like first line in the thing is I searched everywhere. I called everyone and I couldn't find one thing. And it's just Mate, like so impressive. But but okay, so here put let me put another analogy in your head, right? So your life now. Yes. You drive you know, a lovely car, you got a smoking hot wife, you got you know, you got the the, the medals, you know, from your playing career, yeah. all of that. Would you give all of that up? To have a nine to five just so you can have a scrap with some lad in the car park no well there no. you go no no i no I, I wouldn't i think sometimes i i i think i don't ever have a sense of entitlement i think you know you have you have a responsibility that's what you have it's not a sense of entitlement that someone has to have it's everyone has a responsibility if you do our game you have a responsibility in the same way that a footballer does you know what's just happened now Mason Greenwood and Phil Foden yeah. if you listen to this in the future then this was back in the day yeah, yeah. but but Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood we are like a week after they've just left their hotel room or b- brought birds to their hotel room during their like England debuts I know. do you know what I mean interesting choice that. like what would you say to those lads yeah I'd say a fucking cut of idiots and i tell you what I say to young young um rugby players is is that you know we go into camp you're not there to get on the piss and have fun so everyone's always after a game i thought it was important to have a beer but some lads were complaining about not going out i was like under eddie jones so like listen yeah let's do the job and we'll go out on the piss when it's finished be proud to be yeah there. and also when you do go out on the piss and you do have a, 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 a time to chase women or do whatever you're going to do is when you're in, in, in the england duty uh, england guy so yeah. you have a night out on a saturday and on, on sunday you're not in england duty don't go out and misbehave in the England hotel on a Saturday. If you're going to play up and do what you do, and I'm not here to judge because that would like sing cast the first stone. Yeah. Just fucking wait a few days. What you can't. Yeah. I know. Why? Why do you have to drill a couple of girls in your hotel room while you're in the middle of the camp? Right. So if you saw some young England player, yeah. Right, chatting back to people on Twitter, saying blah 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 yeah. blah, going on the piss, blah, blah blah blah. What would you say to that person? I'd say you've got to sort yourself out. I said, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So you have to. You know, you're seeing it from an outside perspective, but. That's why you mustn't let, you know, those things, like, and this applies to everyone when, when you know, and, and it goes back to that thing, if you have a choice, whether or not uh, I choose always, if I see a Daily Mail article about myself, of course you read it. Of course you read it. But do I, have I ever been in the comments? Never. No, never. Safely, I can say, safely. I never can say, go in the comments. Mate, I've had some horrendous things thrown at me. Like, like, uh, like I will forever live my life have a tag of nepotism like yeah that's always what, always that's what i was going to ask you, but, you, but you that's great i don't I, all that means is that sick you think my dad's successful yes <laughs> like, but that was quite that's quite a mature did you always think like that because i say you know obviously i had to think like that i would go to schools and say uh, i would go to school and, and before i'd even joined the school the the teachers had been told martin kemp's kids coming like but you think you be, obviously having famous parents has benefited you yeah but not but it's, you don't see it as a hindrance. You, you, it's benefited you, me mentally. But do you feel like you've tried to get... Do you always feel like on a battle to get out of the shadow? Never. Why would I want to? You see, I, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I'm, I just, I'm just really interested. Yeah, because I no. know other people who do, who really struggle. I they know. feel like defined by it. Yeah, I know. But I don't think... But that's I, because they're not comfortable with, or confident within who they are. Do you, I, think it, I think it would have been harder if you tried to be a fucking singer or you tried to do what your dad had If done. I tried to do acting or... Yeah, yeah it would have been harder. It would have been harder. Well, not that hard. But I think, My dad's not a great actor, so... <laughs> I probably am better than well, him already. Well, your dad's a fucking so. dreamboat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but exactly, mate. How many? How many young kids? I know what you've said. How yeah. many young kids? Right? How many young guys can say safely say yeah. that their dad is better looking <laughs> yeah. than them? That's that's probably out of all the things I was going to ask you. And that that if that's not humbling, yeah, I don't know what. That's is. what I mean. I don't know how I'd handle that. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not, look, I'm not very particularly good looking bloke as it is anyway. I just, you're a good looking lad, got a short, edgy Shoreditch vibe, yeah. like a little emo vibe going on, not yeah. little, but you yeah, know, yeah, ripped yeah. up, you know what I mean? But your dad's a fucking dreamboat, and, and I, I, I wonder, you said, I think we talked about it in the jungle, must sometimes be a bit hard, you're turning up with girls, yeah, and, and they've got one eye looking at you, I mean, and one, one eye, eye looking at your arm, yeah. yeah, 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 it's always a question they always ask, they're like, oh, so to girls, to go, when you get a girlfriend, do they fancy your dad? Obviously, they've got fucking eyes. <laughs> yeah, eyes aren't painted on. Yeah. But, but your mum must be an unsung hero as well in that because she's, she's beautiful yeah, and she lovely is, and yeah. absolute legend. But you've, yeah. you've got a real close dynamic with your family, haven't you? Yeah, my mum is, is number one unsung. Like, she is unreal, you know, and I always go back to looking at the fact that she was literally facing and preparing to raise two kids on her own and have her famous husband die. Like, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, and that's what she went through. She went through that. 
you know, it was, you know, in a way, my dad was like, I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't mind. I was, I was in that situation. I just had to deal with it. Yeah. For my mom, she's like, well, what about this? What about life insurance? You know, I would widow the stuff. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, what have I got to do? Uh, and, and that's incredible. Any woman or any husband that has to go through that or any partner or anything that, you know, that is a job that no one ever wants. And she had it. She smashed it. So for my mom, but also at the same time, like, my mum can go bar for bar with my dad in terms of like places that she's performed at, yeah. life experience. Yeah, yeah. Like people forget. Like my mum started yeah. with Wham. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like and then and then had her own number one records with Pepsi and Shirley. And it's mental. My mum was my mum was the first artist to have a collaboration with Top Shop. Yeah, like, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. stuff like that. Like, uh, and it just goes amiss. Because do you she, reckon she get? Does she get p- ever pissy that she she might feel feel overshadowed by your old man? Never, 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 never. My mum hates hates um, the spotlight and the fame stuff. Does she you? hates the spotlight. She loves the performance. Fine, which I think is the way to be. Yeah, because I, 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 for example, I, yeah, same. I'm the same. I love doing. So I love interviewing you. I yeah. love DJ in front of people. I love speaking. I do them because I love doing it. Yeah, I'd like to get paid. Yeah. But I would, I would rather do what I do, have a hundred million in the bank, and not be fucking famous, and not have that because I, I don't, not orientated 100%. by fame, because fame doesn't get you anything. I don't think it, it, well, it can open your doors, but if you've got no substance and nothing about you, no skills, yeah. you know, like a Ricky Gervais, you might as well just go and kill a load of prostitutes, then you'll be famous. For, exactly, like, like, uh, you know, and it, that goes back to what I was saying. But, but the problem is, is still, even if you do that, you're only famous for a little bit. Yeah, and then you're forgotten. Yeah. You know, and and the people that the people that are remembered for ages are the ones that do the good stuff, and fame is something that sometimes I just laugh at because it's this ethereal thing that doesn't really exist, and all it really is is someone recognizing you. Yeah, and and it's it's pointless, like you know, and and especially in presenting. There's so many presenters that are so like competitive against others. Yes. And it's like, what? Like, why? You can be gutted. We, that, we school- you can be gutted that you missed out on a job because you wanted to do the job, but not like jealous or like. Do you know what I mean? Because there's always the next opportunity, and, and there's always there's always the next thing. I've never been bothered. If anything, I love I love being able to have other presenters that go up for the same job that I do that I can call my mate. Do you know what? I, 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 we used to have it in uh, we used to have it in rugby called. Um... Of like uh, position haters, right. so I'm I'm another back row. I hate the other back row. And I remember once getting into the England camp, and there were some other young back row players there, and you could see they're on edge, like yeah. having a bit giving it evils. And I sat down once and I said to back row me, I said, "Lads, listen, you don't have to like me because it, it doesn't matter. But remember, I don't select the team. Yeah. So in training, let's go fucking head to head. Let's kick fuck out of each other. But afterwards, we're all in this together. And you know, giving me evils or being difficult and stuff is is just never gonna it's never gonna help help." But you get so many players who are like slagging off so and so. It's like lads, they don't fucking pick the team. If you anyone yeah. be angry with the coaches, unify with us because we're all battling together. And yeah. it is weird in that industry where you know if we had a choice to select ourselves the jobs, we would select ourselves every fucking time. Yeah. But people don't do that. Just as one brand wants you, or one gig wants you. It's nothing to do with you. Yeah. Um, it is weird that. But, it, but that's it, why I think you know even with I'm a celeb, it was such a humbling experience because everyone's titles get stripped away. Yeah. I sat I sat waiting to go and do a trial with Caitlin. And Caitlin, I remember, bless her, lovely lady, so nice. But she just, she sat there and she goes, well, you know, when I win this thing, um, it's going to be great for them, for the tele- for the television show. <laughs> and she genuinely thought she was going to win. Yeah. <laughs> she, like, like she had saw no other option uh, I, just because she thought I'm the most famous here. Yeah. Let's go. I, I loved Kate. I thought... It was really interesting that whole. I mean, I will, we will come on to jungle stuff actually, you, and, and your experience of it. Um, but Caitlin was mega. The one thing I just want to t- t- touch on last bit was really the dating in the public eye. Yeah. The, 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 the thing, girl. So you're single now. Yeah. Um, I never. I was never well known enough to, ha- to for ever to be a massive, a massive problem. Yeah. Um, I did more drilling than BP, which is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I with your hand, with my hand yeah. on my own, um, in my house. Um, but no, I, I just. I wonder what it's like to date girls now. Because if I thought I was single, if Chloe decided, rightly so, that I was a dickhead and decided to leave yeah. me, I don't know what it'd be like. Because how do you know that girls aren't just going to sell you out? And also, how yeah. uh, how do you meet a good person who isn't just interested in you and cashing in? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's hard. Really hard, mate. It's really, really hard. And, and I think that people always say to me, like, oh, 
and all of my mates will say to me date a pop star date date someone that's in your industry and i don't want that but aren't they all fruit loops as well no no there, there's there's loads of people that make that it's, it's the same in any job there's some really lovely lovely yeah but people. i think but you're but you're interesting is that everything you've said today yeah right you've you said you, you, you know you're grounded that the benefit of having a, um you know famous parents has has uh, yes has obviously helped you but it hasn't defined you hasn't helped uh held you back you know you, you you're pretty at home with being out there you know, a lot of people in your in your world aren't as balanced because there's no, no way there's no way that people because can they're go, not as privileged they haven't had a, a privileged no. upbringing as I have. Imagine like, yeah, but imagine being thrown into it and you've come from nothing to everything. Mental, yeah. And, and all you see is mad fans and mad sicker fans trying to push you. Mental, yeah. I, I think it would be very hard if I was uh, really famous to go out with someone really famous. I like the idea of it. Like I love like an idea of Margot Robbie or uh, yeah. uh, you know Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. Chloe's gonna love this. Um, or you'd end up with Alan Carr. I fucking yeah. Alan, Alan Carr's yeah. fit. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I I'm just concerned. It'd be interesting to see that when you have two personalities both vying for egos, both yeah. on, it would be even more explosive than going out with a regular joke. Nate, you think like if you realistically think about it, I'm I'm actually against dating someone that's in the public eye as well. Yeah, fine. I am. Like like I think subconsciously I am. In my head, I'm like, no, it'd be fine. It'd be fun. Like you could talk about work. But I think I hate that fame world so much that I... And there'll be people that listen to this saying, oh, if you hate the fame world so much, then why do you do it? That's what I mean. That's what people like, say. I do it fuck because, because I get to wake up in the morning yeah. and laugh. Like, and that's the best. Yeah. And like, you get to hang around with people like James Haskell. We fucking won the lottery. Yeah. Relax. But like, that's, that's the fun bit. That, that's the bit that's enjoyable. Um, but when it comes to dating, I, th- I do think like it's weird that I think so against it. But yet the relationship that I would want to model myself on and the relationship that I look up to is between two pop stars. Yeah. And my mum and my dad. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird. And I think that, I don't know. I've always, I've loved it. If I go on a date with someone and that person genuinely and sincerely says to me, what do you do? Or who are you? Like, and I, I love that. I would absolutely love that. But you get, do you ever get girls who do that? Yeah, all the time. And you can tell. Uh, luckily, my game, my job is to interview people. Fine. So you guess you can, you can, you've got a couple of ideas. Fine, okay. But I think so that, like, what do you, oh, what is it? What do you do? do the you worst thing, mate, the worst thing, mate, is when you feel like you know someone and then they change. Really? That's the worst. That's Fine. the worst. When, when you feel like you know someone and when you feel like, you know, you can just see it. You can see it. Does that happen to you a lot? It's happened to me a couple of times. Fine. As my career has kind of progressed, that person's changed fine but uh, what, how do they change though in what way i don't know that maybe more uh you notice it like you know if, if you get asked for a photo they they're like why am i getting asked for a photo and it's just oh, like really? because it's not like that it's you know it's just because oh so they know. go from happy to be in the back you know to be behind the scenes to so suddenly they being like proud of you to to i'm not understanding why they shouldn't be side by side with you and it's nothing to do with that like it's not that deep like that's yeah. the only way i can describe it it's not that deep because um, the interesting relationship with, 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 with my wife is that she is much more and was before, when we started going out much more tabloid fodder than I ever was much more well known than I ever yeah. was in, you know, in rugby but she's so proud of you man yeah like, and, and, that's, and that comes across yes like, and, and that comes across and I'm yet to find someone that is proud of me and doesn't care about their yes. own look yeah, yeah do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah 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 I get like it. can turn up to something that I'm doing and isn't just waiting to get the best Instagram photo, is actually just there to say, I'm really fucking proud of you and I'm here to support you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I think, I think that comes from, you know, I push Chloe on the other, because I, so I think a lot of times people have um, egos with, uh, you know, their partners and, and worrying about someone being more successful. I want Chloe to be a thousand times Same. more successful and wealthy than I am. And I push her. But I know, as you said, that she's proud of me, and actually, it works really nicely because there isn't there isn't agenda. I'm probably much more like if you and I were a night out, yeah. I'd love to have a photo with you because it makes good Instagram. She's not she's not like that. You yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It, it's I like it's weird because I, I I I what I get upset with people in the fame in the fame world is, and you do it way better because I've seen you do it in person with people who gravitate towards famous people who actually don't have anything about them. 
I struggle. Like, you and I wouldn't get on. I wouldn't care if you were the most famous person in the world. If you didn't have any chat, we didn't get on. I, yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Even if it, even I would stand with you for a photo because it was probably quite good to have a photo with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just wouldn't talk to you because I can't. I couldn't do it. Whereas there's a lot of hangers on and people who do, who seem to, to yeah. do that yes, really man. well. Yes, yeah. man. But you, you know, you, you. I think you quite handle that quite well. I can't. I'm just not very good at doing it. I can do it for a bit, but then the whole schmoozing thing is so hard. And I think it must be hard as well with girls trying to schmooze their way in. Um. <sighs> Yeah, I I think you know, I now I'm not on a mission to go out there and date as many people as I can, like at all. Like I really don't think I am. Like if anything, mate, the next girlfriend that I get, like girlfriend, girlfriend, is gonna be the person that I want to stay with. Fine. Like, and I genuinely believe that. I think you're quite good being single as well, aren't you? Just in terms of like you being work, on my own. Yeah, focusing your for own. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, mate, I'm tired twenty four seven. Yeah. I'm tired 24-7. I just play video games and get on with my life. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm chill. Are you astounded by how uh, mad people in the public go about p- people who are famous? Like that being an example. Like, um, like the oddness, the, 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 no. the panic. No, it doesn't surprise you because you... What I've, you I've grown up with that. I grew, I grew up with... Um, like, that's tame. I grew up with, with people sending underwear to my dad... <laughs> People turning up at the house that have flown over from Germany just to give my dad a box of chocolates. Their Fuck names me. were Doris and Ingrid. Doris and Ingrid. They would turn up every two weeks. Can I just say one thing though? It's a rule. I don't know if you agree with this. Yeah. If um if you're in the public eye and anyone ever gifts you anything, it goes straight in the bin. If yeah, it's in food the bin. product. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what well, I, I had a player um uh, my guy Paul Doran Jones who's who's coming on the podcast. Someone at uh, Northampton, a fan, sent him some brownies, and he got these brownies. He was like, oh um offered them to a teammate because he didn't want to eat them. The bloke was like, oh, brilliant brownies, bit into them, full of hair. And while he was spewing in a bin, all the lads were like, ah! That's what I'm saying. Mate. I would never eat a, anything that's gifted. A uh, cake can I or say, can I say, and this, and I mean this from the nicest place possible, yeah. right? If there's anyone listening right now that has ever sent me stuff, I'm really sorry about throwing it away. Yes. Like, like even if it's a, someone sent me today, someone today, um, someone sent you like a box of chocolate celebrations no i'm not no, no. fully sealed yeah but no, no chance no chance. absolute no chance like it's like, just not worth it not worth it what's the worst thing that's that, that a member of the public's done to you like in terms of the in terms of other than someone shouting at me your mum's a slut yes oh I mean, yeah um what in terms of like creepy yeah like creepy stuff i've had hair scent hair scent i've had hair, scent. hair or just normal hair uh, i think it was normal hair oh, disappointing. um i've had hair scent i've had um people asking for huge amounts of money <laughs> i've had people like formal letters someone sent me a paypal request someone found my paypal and like literally sent me a request with like oh can you just send me five grand like i wonder what they think's gonna happen like yeah like you know and then or like and then it, like i've had underwear a couple of times yeah um did you i've had underwear dirty underwear or? there was men men's right <clears throat> men's underwear Fine. yeah that comes up Sorry Every now and again. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did think they were quite small. We, well, there's, a, there's a chapter in the book, What a Flanker, to talk about um, a bloke used to message all the uh, rugby players, England rugby players, offering them money to, to wank off on camera. Um, yeah, I bet. And I, that's why I said, yeah, fine. I said, 10 grand, I, I'll do it. Yeah. And he said, well, I can't afford that. So we can't fucking can't get more from ever wanking. Well, there you go. So, you know, don't, don't offer to pay people if you haven't got the fucking cash. Mate. I out sicko the sicko. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, I'll do it for free. And he, for bizarrely, he didn't yeah, want yeah, it. Didn't, didn't want it. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> Well, look, Roman, I, look, I think it's been amazing having you, you, you on today. Um, I think it'd be really interesting. I think, you know, the topic was, was, was fame, and I think we've covered all of that. What, what in your career now, I know the world's falling apart, do you want yeah. to do next? What's your, what's, your, what, what's your on your bucket list of things to do? The bucket list, I, I would love to have a big Saturday night TV show. 100%. Like, I'd love to host a Saturday night TV show. Like, and, and again, this is another thing of, like, I can't believe that some people out there are actually, like, jealous of people, like, in a bad way. Like I heard that, like obviously when I heard that um, they were making Mars Singer, I was like, oh my god, like I would love to do that gig. Like please try and get that gig. And then Joel Domic got that gig. Joel's a great friend of mine. He's a lovely guy. I'm so happy for him that yeah. he does that. Like like it's wicked. It's a great show. There's always going to be. Another I'm not show. that happy with Joel because he slagged me off on uh, I'm a Slave to Get Me Out of Here. So. Oh, he's so, fine. He's no, fine. I like Joel. I like Joel. No, he is a comedian. But he, wow, he he'll be a comedian know. with a broken fucking leg. No, I <laughs> I speak to Joel. I speak to Joel every now and then. I haven't. I never like, had a chance you know, to bury he's, him. He's like. He's, you know, and it's that situation where it's like, okay, he does that, there'll be another show. And Fine. so for me, yeah, I, I would love to, would love to be able to do, you know, uh, my, uh, the bucket list of 
to have a chat show, like Fine. an actual chat show, because but they they don't really get made anymore. Um, the well, like a Graham Norton or Jonathan Ross yeah, style show. Yeah, yeah. Could you have? Because you know they always have like a weird guy. You know, I think what was it on Ellen Generous or or Saturday Are you Night asking Live? If you could be the weird fall guy. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. in the corner, just creepy. in the corner. Creepy. 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 Funny and big. Okay, funny and big. Yeah, funny I'll and big. I remember that. Yeah, perfect. Because I oh, think of the little people as you're on the yeah, way out. Yeah, exactly. No, but they, uh, you know, but TV. But then at the same time, me, I, I think to have the biggest radio show on on the planet, and that is official, isn't it? So, uh, so yes, yeah, so, I mean, essentially, with like, in terms of national breakfast radio, um, I mean, certainly within London, I think if you push the transmitters or whatever, I don't know, it's formalities. Listen, fine. I, I'd love, I'd love it if I could say. 100% in stone no way to no two ways about it that we have the biggest show what what kind of listening fees do you get because I know you get them 7 quite... mil a week fucking hell it's a lot listen of people. to you as well I know mate, it's... that's what I think mate I honestly I think that I've been talking I to you for an hour I think people chat, wanna... chat like I know you're tired already I, I want to stick with fucking pen in my eardrum that's so... what I'm saying it's like it's like mate I think that all the time I think how do people find like that funny or like whatever so do you, so out the back of COVID you're, you're in a good place obviously you've had those ups and downs but you feel yeah. positive ready to ready to crack on yeah mate um, you know like I said I've got two choices uh, you choose to be happy Perfect. I mean, look, we haven't, um, we didn't cover the, the jungle, but I have to get you on. If this gets into another series, yeah. we'll, oh, we'll talk again. That's a whole other episode. That is a whole that's other a episode. Whole episode yeah. Roman, you're an absolute hero. Where, if people want to follow you and find out what you're doing, where can they do that? Um, at Roman Kemp. If you want to Instagram me, uh, or you can tune into Capital Breakfast weekdays, six a.m. Um, I do a Sunday morning TV show with my dad on ITV called Sunday Best. We didn't even cover that. I'm coming on that. You're coming on that. I'm very exactly. excited because you're best mates with dad, aren't you? Best mates. I love that. Best mates. Yeah. I does, think, I think I does it give you? A good, does it give you um, advice? Does he ever put his arm around you? All the say? time. Really? But I give him advice, like in the same way. You know, it, it bounces. Oh, what other. advice should you give him? Like, stop being so fucking sexy. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, can you just break your nose? Or <laughs> can you like? just turn the sexiness yeah, down exactly, a little bit? Exactly. I spoke exactly. to your dad. I told you on radio when you were still in the jungle. Yeah, exactly. Bonded. Yeah. I want to come around for tea. I haven't really quite qualified for that invitation he's, yet. No, mate. He's, he's a lovely guy. Considering like, I thought your dad time. was Ross Kemp, there'll be no fanboy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah they yeah. won't be an awkward. I'll be like, listen, your dad's lovely. I'm more interested in yeah. you than your parents. So I won't. And if like you do want to see my dad's new episode of Get On Gangs, I'm sure it will be out soon. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Um, well, that's it. Thank you so much. Thanks, brother. I will catch you all soon. And by the way, I'll get you a copy of my book. Or an audio book, actually. Oh. Because you probably haven't got Still time Still plugging read. the book on the books podcast. The book on the book puzzle. podcast. What podcast. a flanker. Yeah, what a flanker. There you go. You've been listening to What a Flanker. Also out on um, audio book. Or you can buy the hard copy. I don't know, like WHS or something. Waterstones as well. Waterstones. Thank you. Love you.